Okay, let's practice some uh, key things that we need to know how to do in algebra. So if you are taking any sort of algebra uh, course, you're going to need to know how to graph a lot of different functions. And this particular function is actually a quadratic function, and the shape of a quadratic function is a parabola. So it's a U uh, shape type of graph. It could look like this or it could look like this. And what we want to do, uh, we want to graph the parabola, this quadratic function. We want to graph its uh, respective graph, which, of course, is a parabola. But I want to know some specific, thing, specific things about the graph. I want to know the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the vertex. All right, so this is a typical type of a math problem that you will face in uh, any sort of algebra uh, class. So this is, you know, will be on your quizzes and tests. So you definitely need to know how to do this. Now, if you think you can, uh, or if you remember, if you think you can do this, well, go ahead and pause the video and put your answers in the comment section, x-intercept, y-intercept, and vertex. Of course, you can't put your graph in there, but if you give me this information, well, that'll be pretty uh, impressive. But I'm going to get into exactly what we need to do here to graph this and get the x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and vertex in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you're struggling in math, okay, if you feel like you're just not getting enough of math instruction in school, maybe you don't like your, your teacher's teaching style, Maybe you feel like you have a bad math teacher, okay? And uh, unfortunately, there is bad math teachers, but there's a lot of great math teachers out there that sometimes, you know, you just don't connect with their their teaching style. That can happen, okay? But here's the deal. What can happen is you uh, falling back and failing uh, mathematics, all right? So I can help you out. I've been working with math students for decades teaching, and I like to believe that I have a teaching style that's clear and understandable. So if you're at the middle school high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, you definitely got to check out my math help program because I can uh, help you out. Now, if you're preparing for any kind of test that has math on it, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLEP exam, a teacher certification exam, I can go on and on and on. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my homeschool math curriculum and program. Very comprehensive and working with homeschoolers for years. And if you need math notes, don't panic. Uh, I'm going to let you use my math notes. Just uh, follow the links in the description of this video. But if you want great math grades, you got to take great math notes. Just, just do this, okay? <laughs> There's no getting around it. You'll thank me later. All right, so let's get into graphing this quadratic function. Now, right here, we can't really tell. Well, some of you might be able to uh, tell that this is a quadratic function. And uh, the way it's written is actually very beneficial to us, but we're going to have to do some other things here uh, in a second. But again, if you want to work on this problem before you see the solution, just pause the video and tell me what the x-intercepts, uh, the y-intercept, and the vertex is. And, uh, of course, I'm going to go through this right now. All right, so the first thing we want to do is... We have our uh, function, our equation, and there's some technical things. This is written as a quadratic equation, okay, because there's a y equal uh, right here. But remember, in algebra, y is equal to f of x. So I could write this as a quadratic function. This is a quadratic equation, basically the same thing. So f of x is equal to x plus 3 times x minus 5. I could say I could write it this way. This is a quadratic function. This is a quadratic equation. But effectively, again, y is equal to f of x. So don't get too thrown by the terminology here. Okay. All right. So one of the things that we want to do here is write this quadratic equation uh, in two forms. Okay. We have it in its current form. It's factored form, which is going to come in very handy in a second. But let's go ahead and multiply these uh, binomials. And when we do that, we go x plus 3 times x minus 5. We use the FOIL method, and hopefully you remember how to do that, uh, F-O-I-L. And if you don't remember how to do the FOIL method, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Just look at my pre-algebra and algebra playlist, or better yet, better yet, just sign up for my algebra course, and you'll master all this stuff. But when we uh, multiply these two binomials together, we get this, x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 15. And that simplifies down to this quadratic equation. All right, so we have this quadratic equation written in two forms. Okay, it's the same equation, but uh, I want it written in two forms, and you'll see why I need it in uh, both forms. Okay, so 
it's not absolutely required to write it in this way, but it's it, it in some respects it is, and you'll you'll kind of see here in a second. All right. So, uh, anyways, that's the first thing we want to do. Now, let's go ahead and start getting some of this information here, and let's focus in first on the x-intercepts. Okay. So, what are the x-intercepts? Well, the x-intercepts are when uh, it's what x is equal to when y is equal to zero. Okay. So here I have y right there. So when I set y to 0, I got this right there. So I have 0 is equal to x plus 3 times x minus 5. This is how we find the x-intercepts, again, when y is equal to 0. Well, how do I solve this equation? Well, hopefully you remember how to solve basic um, uh, quadratic equations. This is a zero product property. This times this is equal to 0. So we set each one of these uh, factors here equal to 0. So, for example, x plus 3, we'll set that equal to 0. When we solve this equation, we get x uh, is equal to negative 3. And then we have x minus 5. When we set that equal to 0, we get x is equal to 5. So these two points right here on uh, the x-axis are our x-intercepts. They're also the solution to this quadratic equations. But graphically speaking, these are the x-intercepts. These are our two real roots for this quadratic equation. Okay, so hopefully you understood that. Now let's go ahead and move over and talk about the y-intercept, okay? Now notice that we don't have the y-intercepts because you'll see graphically speaking, here's uh, x and here is y, okay? If I have a parabola and it's going through like this, notice it's only going to cross to the y-axis once. It will cross to the x-axis twice if it has real roots. So that's why there's only one y-intercept. Okay, so how do we find the y-intercept? Well, remember, when we found the x-intercept, we, we let uh, y is equal to 0. When we want the x-intercept, we're going to let x is equal to 0. Okay, so we'll plug in 0 right here uh, for this x and 0 right there for this x. And this is going to be 0 and 0, so we're left with just negative 15. y is equal to negative 15. So this is the y-intercept. Okay, all right, so we got the x-intercepts and the y-intercept, now let's talk about the vertex. Okay, so this is where students uh, can get a little confused. And uh, actually, I kind of misspoke there. We definitely want to have uh, um, our equation here written um, when we multiply these two binomials because we're going to need to use this little formula right here. So the vertex is, let me just kind of graphically draw. So the vertex is either going to be the maximum or the minimum point on our little parabola. And it's a point, it's a specific x, y point, okay? So how do we find the x and how do we find the y point of this vertex? Well, to find the x component of our uh, x, y point, we're gonna go minus b over 2a. Now, what does that mean here? Well, I'm gonna show you what that means here in a second. So let me just scoot this down. Remember when you're uh, solving the quadratic equation, we had ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, this is a, a, a general quadratic uh, equation written in standard form. You'll want to review working with the quadratic formula, but hopefully this is pretty familiar with you. So the coefficient in front of the x squared term, in this case it's 1, is going to be a. The number in front of the x term, in this case it's negative 2, will be b. And then over here, this negative 15, or that uh, constant term, will be C. Okay, so if I was uh, using the quadratic formula, okay, I could plug in my A, B, C values, but I need the same uh, A and B values to find my vertex. So uh, minus B over 2A, I'm using uh, this setup right here, will be the X part of my vertex. Remember, my vertex is an X, Y point, so to find the X part of that point, it's minus b over 2a. So let's go ahead and find that, find that now. So it's minus b, okay? So that's going to be minus, all right, right here. So that's minus. Here's my minus. Now b is what? b is negative 2. So it's minus of minus 2. Okay, so I know I'm kind of, uh, you just kind of have to focus where I'm kind of showing you. Okay, we're looking up here. We're following that formula, but I'm doing the work right here. So minus b is minus minus 2 because b is negative 2 over... 2 times a, and a is a positive 1, okay? So 2 times a, or 2 times positive 1. So now we're ready to go to simplify this. So negative of a negative 2 
is positive 2. 2 times 2 is 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. So when it comes to our vertex, our xy point 1 is our x component to our xy point. Okay, so now I just need to find the y. So how do I find the y value? Well, basically, we're going to take our, our answer for our x component, which in this case it's 1, okay, and we're going to plug that in to the function. Basically, we're going to re replace all these x's with our answer, okay, x is 1. We're going to plug that 1 in and we'll get the y component. Now, I've done other videos on finding the vertex for parabola, so if I'm going a little bit too quick for you, uh, you'll want to watch some uh, additional videos that I have on this. But basically, again, up here, we're going to replace these x's now with 1, okay, because that's what we got for this answer. And when I do that, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 15. And when I simplify that, y is going to be equal to negative 16. So our vertex is our x part, again, was 1. And our y part to our xy point is negative 16. Okay, so we have 1 over negative uh, 16. Okay, so that's our vertex. And these are all key points that are on this parabola. And then we have our y-intercept at negative 15. We have an x-intercept. Uh, negative 3 and 5. So now we need to uh, determine, is this a positive uh, or negative parabola? So what am I talking about here? Let me go up here and show you. Let me erase this real quick. This is an important detail to understand. Okay, so we have two parabolas. We have happy parabolas, things that are happy to be parabolas. They're very happy to be parabolas. And we have sad parabolas, things that wish they were something else. They were like, maybe I want it to be a line or a circle, but you get the idea. So how can we determine a happy parabola or a sad parabola? Well, I'm going to show you right now. So let's go back to our, I'm just going to make something up here and we'll answer this question right now. Okay. So I'm just making up two parabolas. So the key to know whether you're dealing with a happy parabola or a uh, sad parabola is we're going to look at the, the sign of the x squared term, okay? So if the sign is positive, then you have a positive parabola. You have a parabola that's just very excited to be a parabola. So if it's positive, okay, it's going to be this way. If it's negative, then you got a sad parabola, okay? So that's what you need to look at. And going back to our problem here, you can see we are dealing with a nice positive parabola. So that's going to be some sort of shape like this. All right, so we know it's going to be this way, a happy-looking parabola. We got all our information. So let's go ahead and put this all together now. All right, so here it is. Um, again, here was our problem, and then we uh, multiply these two binomials. So either these are equivalent problems. So we have our x-intercepts. One was at negative 3 and one was at 5. These are our two real number roots. Okay. Here is our y-intercept down at negative 15. And you can reference this uh, information all up here. This is when I'm just pulling all this stuff down here. And then our vertex is at 1, 1, negative 16. So it's right there. Okay. So you would want to... Uh, put all these key components in. That's also our axis of symmetry. X is equal to 1, this little line going through here, because a parabola is symmetric. In other words, its left-hand side is symmetric to its right-hand side. We know this thing is a happy parabola, so then we go ahead and sketch our parabola right here, as I did right here in blue. Okay, it's going through all these th uh, key components or key uh, points right here. So this is a problem that you're definitely going to be uh, required to, uh, to do to be successful in your algebra courses. So, um, again, graphing all sorts of various functions in algebra is uh, critical, but uh, it's not beyond, you know, your ability to learn, okay? But there is a lot of uh, little details here, and you got to stay focused, or, you know, you can easily make a mistake. And that's why you, know, you got to double-check your work, because if you... Let's say you had these key components and your graph was coming out like all wrong or like this way and you knew that, oh, this thing has to be a uh, positive parabola, but the points aren't working out that way, then that's a good indication that, hey, you know, you made an error someplace. So everything should connect when you pull uh, all this together. But if you got this right all on your own, you got the vertex 
and all these key points, then I must go ahead and give you a nice happy face with a good old 1985, that was a great year, uh, uh, flat top haircut. I don't see those haircuts anymore, unfortunately. And all of us that uh, wore that haircut back in the 80s probably don't have as much hair up here, but that was an awesome haircut, okay? Uh, I would love to get one of these haircuts today, but again, my hair is not it quite what it used to be. But anyways, nice job, A plus 100%. Um, now, if you were confused about any aspect of this problem, don't get discouraged, okay? Use this as feedback, okay? Um, so a couple quick suggestions. One, uh, I have tons of videos on quadratic functions and equations and graphing in my uh, YouTube uh, playlist, in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. Of course, I teach this thoroughly in all my algebra courses in my math help program. But if this particular little video helps you out in some small way, uh, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. I try to teach this stuff in a clear and understandable way, but my best math help will always be with my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.